Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. On Saturday morning, we have a battle between two Blue Blood programs that have gone in completely different directions since the last time they met. Number one, Alabama will take on Texas for the first time since the 2009 season when the Crimson Tide and the Longhorns met in the national championship game, one that Alabama won 37-21 for their first national title under Nick Saban. Since the 2010 season, so since that game, Alabama is 150 and 17, with five national championships and at least 10 wins in every single season. Texas, on the other hand, is 83 and 67, with five losing seasons and just one 10-win season. The two teams now, of course, meet in Austin. Alabama looking to continue their dominance. Texas looking to shock the nation. And today, guys, we are here to break down everything you need to know for this game and sharing whether or not the Longhorns can do the unthinkable. So welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, guys. We're ready to break down everything you need to know for Alabama and Texas. As always, please continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. We're so close to 10 thousand subscribers. Help us get to that mark, guys, and become a part of the GE Nation. You can also do that by signing up for our expert picks over on the gridironexpert.com, some of the best college football and NFL spread picks in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. We're hitting over 60% of our bets each of the last two weeks. You do not want to miss out on this deal, guys. Go become part of our GE Nation. Sign up for those picks today. Again, over on the gridironexpert.com, the link for that down in the description below. So let's go ahead and dive into the, you know, the personnel, guys. Let's take a look. Alabama, the top-ranked team in the country. Texas coming in here, fresh off a win over ULM. Obviously, another intriguing battle is, of course, Nick Saban taking on Steve Sarkeesian, who was the former offensive coordinator at Alabama. I mean, this game has it all, guys. I mean, two historic programs. Uh, the coaching battle's interesting. The quarterback battle's interesting. The location being in Austin and not a neutral site or anything like that is interesting. It's going to make for a fun atmosphere and environment and a lot of hype uh, heading into Saturday. But you look at the two teams, guys. You take a look at Alabama first, offensively. Uh, they have it all. Now, they've got the Heisman Trophy winner from last year and Bryce Young, a guy who accounted for six touchdowns last week in their 55 to nothing route of Utah State. Again, Utah State winning the Mountain West last year, winning 11 games in 2021. You've got a guy like Jameer Gibbs transferring in from Georgia Tech, who's going to make a very big impact, not just in the passing game, but obviously on the ground, rushing for 93 yards last year. guy like Jermaine Burton making his presence known. Two touchdowns last week against Utah State. Again, Alabama 55 points, 559 yards of offense, and very balanced. 281 passing yards, 278 rushing yards. I mean, from top to bottom, guys, this team is loaded offensively. And Texas is going to have a hard time trying to stop both the rushing game and the, and the passing game, but obviously having a hard time facing one of the best quarterbacks in the entire country. When you look at the Longhorns offense, obviously it's a new era for them. Uh, they think they can have one of the better quarterbacks in the entire country. You've got a guy in Quinn Ewers who was the big five-star recruit that finally landed on Texas, made his debut last week against ULM, 225 passing yards and two touchdowns. Had an interception on like his second pass and his car got towed. So not ideal start for Ewers, but he settled in, got Texas the win, winning that game, what, 52 to 10? The Longhorns overall had 383 total yards of offense. And let's keep in mind that on top of him, you've got Bajon Robinson at running back, one of the best running backs in the country. You've got Xavier Worthy, one of the best wide receivers in the country. And this offense as a whole guy is going to try to do everything they can to mix it up and have a couple big explosive plays to get this Alabama defense on their heels. And that's what Texas has to do. They're going to have to rely on some big time plays, some weaknesses in Alabama's secondary, uh, the ability to break some tackles and get a lot of yards after the catch. That's how Texas moves the ball and points, uh, puts points on the board against Alabama. But you look at Alabama's defense, uh, again, it's to be expected, just like their offense, uh, extremely loaded. I mean, it has a chance to be even better than they were last year. We knew Alabama had a weakness kind of in the secondary. That was an area they struggled with a little bit in 2021. It looked a lot better just last week against Utah State and has the talent to be better over the course of the year. Alabama last week, guys, held a Utah State team that loves to throw the ball, held them to 136 total yards and just 57 yards passing. It shut them out, 57 passing yards the entire game. 
They have arguably the best defensive player in the country in Will Anderson being the anchor of the, de the defense. But you have other guys that are contributing too. You have Henry to -oh, to oh back in that linebacking core. You've got a guy like Jordan Battle in the secondary. Eli Ricks transferring in from LSU also in the secondary. Malachi Moore. All of those guys being such a key part in all three levels uh, of this Alabama defense. You look at Texas. One thing that I'm really interested to see is how well can Alabama's defense rattle Quinn Ewers. You've got a guy making just second career start of his college career at home. Sure, good for him, but against the number one team in the country and a brilliant defensive mind in Nick Saban and a brilliant defensive team in Alabama. Texas, last week against ULM, gave up three sacks. That doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that is a lot. That's three sacks for a young QB to get hit, not to mention all the other hurries and, and times he was under pressure. So three sacks. I can bet you that Texas offensive line doesn't st straighten things out. Alabama's going to have way more than that by the time the game ends on Saturday. So Texas has got to find a way to handle this Alabama pass rush. And additionally, I think Alabama's secondary is so strong that Ewers, you know, if he makes a couple mistakes, Alabama, we know, is going to capitalize off of those. So Texas has to do a good job of taking care of the football. Alabama, their key defensively is to get after the young quarterback. Uh, get after him. He's young. He's new. He's fresh. Rattle him early, and it could be a very long day for Texas. When you look at the Longhorns, uh, they didn't have a great defense last year. Pete Kwiatkowski was not putting up the numbers we thought he would put up uh, in his first year as defensive coordinator in Austin. Uh, the problem is I don't really think Texas's defense is going to show much improvement, at least in week two. I don't think they're going to show much improvement against this Alabama offense. Uh, they allowed 259 yards last week to ULM, including 167 through the air, which, again, isn't a whole lot. Uh, but I think a lot of people were surprised it was as much as it was against ULM. Like, again, a very poor team that showed some improvement last year, but probably shouldn't have put up as many yards and, and even, some would say even points uh, against this Texas team. And I know they were scored late, but still. For Texas to win and for Texas' defense to make an impact in this game, they have to make Alabama one-dimensional. They've got to find a way to, to limit the big plays for Alabama. So shut down the run game. Again, last week, Alabama, 278 rushing yards. So if Texas can shut down the run game and force Alabama to win the game through the air, the Crimson Tide are capable of that, but at least Texas knows they can hone in on one thing. They've got to find a way to take away one aspect of the game. Uh, I don't believe Texas is going to be able to get that much pressure on Bryce Young, uh, which means he's going to have time to stand in the pocket and deliver. So the secondary is going to have to play some really good ball. And additionally to that, Texas is going to have to make their open field tackles. Uh, you can't beat yourself when you play Alabama. So if you have a guy in the open field, you've got to be able to take him down. You can't allow for too many yards after the catch. You can't allow for too many yards after contact. Texas has to play practically mistake-free football. And it's not just Texas. It's everybody that plays Alabama practically has to play mistake-free football. And the question is, do we think that Texas can do that? Do we think the Longhorns can actually play mistake-free football? The ultimate answer is no. Ultimate answer is no. Guys, this is a fantastic matchup brand-wise. Again, two blue blood programs, two of the biggest brands in all of sports, Texas and Alabama. But talent-wise, coaching-wise, all of the above, Alabama owns the significant edge. Again, the only edge that Texas owns in this game is home field advantage. And a lot of people are upset with that because it's an 11 a.m. kickoff. So Texas doesn't even get the benefit of having it later in the afternoon or at night where people maybe could be a little more rowdy and, and, and make it a more tougher environment. It's 11 a.m. in Austin. Uh, bottom line is Nick Saban is not going to lose to Steve Sarkeesian. Uh, Alabama's defense is way too good for this young quarterback. But John Robinson for Texas, as good as he is, not many teams can run successfully against Alabama. I believe Bajon Robinson will be lucky if he can eclipse 75 rushing yards against Alabama, and that might be too generous. So the Texas run game is going to be a pretty much a big non-factor, which means all the weight is going to be put on Quinn Ewer's shoulders, and that's a big weight to put on him uh, in his second ever start uh, of his college career. So Alabama, across the board, guys, is the better team. I believe they win this game by at least 14 points. The game easily could be out of reach by halftime, but as many are projecting, as many will say, Alabama will win this game in dominating fashion. The Longhorns have not defeated a top-four team, guys, since 2008. Uh, and that streak will continue, at least for maybe a few more weeks, because they're simply just not going to be able to beat Alabama on Saturday morning. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, share our videos. Check out everything again down in the description below. Go sign up for those expert picks over on our website, thegridironexpert.com. Some of the best college football NFL spread picks 
in the entire country for one of the lowest prices in the entire country. Again, we want you to become a part of our GE Nation. So make sure to subscribe and check out everything down in the description. And once again, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.